and welcome to your region this week. I'm Anandi Carol Willery. The region of Waterloo is holding public consultation sessions for the second phase of the ION running from Fairway Station to Bruce Street and Galt to address any concerns the public may have. From raised bridges to roundabout ION crossings, you can expect there to be a few. So stage two is the extension of our LRT system from Kitchener to Cambridge, starting at the Fairway Station all the way down to downtown Cambridge at the Bruce Street Station that's proposed. We'll be connecting to the existing system, so Fairway Station, and it would go from there up and over Fairway Road, connect into the approved River Road extension in the middle and then it would run on the west side of Highway 8 and parallel Highway 8 across the Grand River and then get into the middle of King Street through the Sports World area, so center running bi-directional, and it would continue under the 401 and at Shantz Hill it would go down Shantz Hill but not quite as steep. So at the top it'll be at grade and then it would go down to about 4%. So by the bottom, it would actually be grade separated or be elevated so that uh, it wouldn't be an at grade crossing with a fountain at the bottom of the hill. That structure would continue across the Speed River and then wend its way to King and Eagle. Uh, along Eagle for a short stretch, uh, up and over CP again, where there's an existing level crossing with, with uh, the CP track on Eagle Street. So up and over that. And then it would continue on an existing but unused CP spur that the region would need to acquire from CP. And, and then make its way over to Hespler Road. Uh, so just south of, of Pine Bush Eagle, we would connect into Hespler Road and then go down the middle of Hespler Road, almost all the way to the Delta, not quite. We would come off of Hespler Road before we get to the, grade set, the existing grade separation there, go along an existing railway corridor and make our way to Beverly and Dundas. So there's a planned roundabout at that location as part of the Dundas Street project. We'd go through the middle level with that roundabout. It would work quite well. We'd have gates at the entries so people in the roundabout could, could uh, um, get out of the roundabout. We would then make our way along the backs of the Beverly Street properties parallel to Mill Creek and then past the existing Ainsley Street terminal and to Bruce Street. So it's 17 and a half kilometers of new track, bi-directional, uh, eight new stations, uh, many of them in about the same location as the current ION bus stations. There is a lot of elevated section, a lot of design work still to do. We are estimating that construction will occur 2028 at the earliest, so no, no earlier than 2028 and approximately four years worth of construction takes us to opening no earlier than 30, 30, uh, 20, 32, excuse me. So we have uh, upcoming public meetings on the 19th, 20th, and 21st. So on the 19th, we're at Preston Memorial Auditorium from four till eight. Uh, on the 20th, we're at Sunbridge Hotel from four till eight. And then we're at City Hall on the 21st from two till eight. So people can come in in person. We invite you to come out chat with staff, we ha we'll have consultant staff on hand to answer any technical questions. The Minister of Transportation is creating a business advisory council with the Connect the Corridor Coalition. The coalition's goal is to have reliable consumer rail service connecting Waterloo Region with the City of Toronto. 570 News' Mike Farwell speaks with the President and CEO of the Greater Kitchener Waterloo Chamber of Commerce about how this can all come about. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Mike. Always good to be with you. It's always good to catch up with you, sir. The uh, forming of a business advisory council with the Connect the Corridor Coalition. So what does this mean for perhaps all-day two-way go in our community? Yeah, so maybe let me take a step back. The Connect the Corridor Coalition itself is a, is a business-led uh, group that have come together um, that uh, have a right from right across the corridor, from Toronto right through Waterloo Region, saying, um, connecting our communities with uh, commuter rail service, frequent, fast, um, all-day two-way go service is a critically important part of economic growth, 
um, what many of our your listeners may not know, and we, we're telling the story, there's more people that commute into Waterloo Region now on a morning morning by morning basis than go into Toronto. So this is this has got um, a real resonance for business right across the corridor. So we've been working on this issue. We formed this Connect the Corridor Coalition. We've got a secretariat that's been really working on this uh, for the last number of uh, of months, uh, last year, in fact. And part of one of the asks that we made of the minister was saying um, that we it was important to have the Ministry of Transportation staff, the Metrolinx, which is the the arm that actually runs Go Go service, and the, our business community right across that corridor to be able to sit down at the table, be able to share in a somewhat confidential manner, so we can have all the facts, and make some recommendations to the minister herself around how we achieve all day two way Go service. And and that what that means is we're going to sit down and talk about what are the because there's there's a lot of pieces there's infrastructure that needs to be built there's uh, there's policy issues that need to be addressed so we're going to work with them get the research that they might need to make the business decision to invest in in the uh, in the Brampton uh, Toronto um, Waterloo La Go line uh, to make sure that we have that fr- fast frequent all day two way Go service uh, that that is so critical to moving talent to where the jobs are. Your Region This Week continues after this. Welcome back. Waterloo Regional Police launched their provincial ride campaign at headquarters last Wednesday. With many other regional police associations in attendance, the police are working towards aiming for zero. Our service is extremely honoured to host this year's provincial kickoff for the holiday ride campaign with a focus on aim for zero. Locally, the campaign will run in Waterloo Region starting November 23rd through until January 6, 2020. Crashes involving alcohol and or drugs remain the leading cause of death in Canada. And we know that the impacts that these deaths have on the victims, on the families, and the ripple impacts on our communities, our neighbourhoods, our academic institutions, and the pressures they put on our insurance industry and our public health services. We are encouraging members of our community to always aim for zero when it comes to alcohol and drug impaired driving. Aim for Zero includes zero alcohol, zero cannabis, zero other drugs, zero crashes and zero charges. Uh, Sadly, uh, OPP patrolled highways. We've had 38 fatalities um, so far year to date, which is uh, as a result of uh, impaired um, driving. So this is an opportunity for everyone in our community to take time and to be part of the awareness and recognize the effects of impaired driving and take that opportunity to think long and hard. And uh, as has been stated, there's many, many opportunities for Ubers and for taxis and uh, different uh, staying at, at friends and family's homes when we're at a function to celebrate. This is a time of celebration, not a time where we have tragedy. I just want to thank you for the educational campaign that you've all been part of for many years now. Uh, they say that education is a key part of empowerment and that knowledge transfers so that people don't feel that you know they are entitled or emboldened to drink and drive. I think with the uh, influx of and the legalization of cannabis is that we're on another frontier, another challenge that we must face where people need to understand that uh, using drugs and then driving is not safe. This is an important, important event. We do it annually and we do it because the message continues to need to be heard across this province and across this country. And everyone in this room and everyone across this province has a role to play in that. I want to first of all I want to thank MPP Catherine Fein. Thank you for being here. It it means a lot that our government is here and supporting this. I also want to thank Chief Larkin uh, hosting this event. Your staff have done an incredible job and and I really sincerely appreciate it. Most of all, I want to thank our media partners. 
Without you, this event would virtually be meaningless. It is so critical that you are here and that you are helping us to take the message that is going to be spoken about today and to get the word out across this province and help us get it out across this country that it can never be the right choice to drive impaired, whether by alcohol or by drug. If you know young people, if you know someone who might make the mistake of driving after drinking, in, encourage them to get to know what the penalties are. The consequences for making this mistake, even if you don't hit anyone, are really significant. You won't like them. Uh, we get calls from people's mothers or girlfriends saying, oh, you know, this happened to my boyfriend, my son. It's not fair. It's actually very fair, and you're lucky that they got caught and punished that way instead of actually hitting someone and injuring themselves or, heavens forbid, someone else. Earlier this week, the Art of Talent Conference was underway in Waterloo, helping companies learn how to grow in the region. We spoke with the founder of the conference on how this benefits the region. The Art of Talent Conference is a one-day conference that is targeted for professional um, that are involved in recruiting, growing, scaling their organization. It is a one-day event. Um, we have some keynote speaker, we have breakout sessions as well, and we go through a variety of topics from sourcing methodologies, recruitment marketing, um, scaling, uh, diversity, um, you know, diverse team or, or distributed teams as well. And um, hopefully this is an annual affair, but this year is the first year that we're launching this in Waterloo. I mean, we, we're looking and we're continuing to um, hire people locally. We want to keep the people, uh, the talented individuals in our community versus them leaving for other opportunities. So the idea is to equip ourselves with the right tools and, and methodologies to not only attract, but then retain them um, in our organizations. As early stage venture investors, one of the biggest competitive advantages a startup can have is access to talent. And as the talent wars, particularly in mature hubs like San Francisco and New York heat up, uh, many of our companies are looking to other locations where they can access pools of really talented entrepreneurs and early stage team members. Um, we're recommending many of our companies that we've invested in look in the region to potentially open other offices. Um, we're continuing to invest heavily in FAIR and Terminal, two companies that have been instrumental in growing the startup ecosystem. Uh, and we're here to share lessons in the Bay Area company building that we've learned through uh, seeing many phases of company growth, but also to learn from the local entrepreneurs and heads of talent. Um, well, talent, uh, which is very in line with the theme today. Um, access to an amazing talent pool. Um, we've got such a great tech ecosystem in the Kitchener-Waterloo region, uh, obviously fueled by um, the universities and colleges locally, but also um, by just such a, a thriving, um, everything from startup to large companies in the tech sector here. Oh, it's been incredible. Um, uh, the region has embraced us. We've had a lot of support from the local tech community, uh, as well as, again, from the universities and colleges. Um, we've grown the team. Uh, we have two locations now, uh, right next door to CG here, um, and uh, uh, a, a strong and thriving workforce that is, have joined our team locally. Your region this week. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 519 Sports Online covers a local softball athlete who signs a Division I scholarship with the Charleston Cougars in South Carolina. A memorable moment for McKenna Kelly. Years of hard work and dedication culminating with a Division I softball scholarship. Kelly officially signing on Wednesday to join the Charleston Cougars next season in South Carolina. This has been like such a hard journey. There's been a lot of tears and um, anger sometimes, but also a lot of happiness. Um, and it's been such a long journey and just to be here today, kind of ending it, but also starting the new journey to um, into university has been such a big thing. <laughs> like I, I really love um, how much support I've had from 
all the coaches, all my teammates, just having all my family here today has been an um, amazing part of this entire experience. The 17-year-old is a hard-throwing pitcher who was a highly coveted prospect. She had a number of different offers from NCAA schools south of the border. I'm very proud. Um, I know that a lot of people dream to have this opportunity and um, to actually be here today and have this opportunity is like really special. I've had a lot of people mention to me that it's my speed that's been a really big factor and um, kind of striking out those batters, I guess you'd say. Uh, it's my speed, but also my, um, I feel like my spin on the ball has been able to really improve, especially over the last few years, um, and it's able to really kind of fool the batters. That's kind of what I love to do. I love to kind of work with the batters, play with them, um, <laughs> kind of try to work, try to strategize to get those, those strikeouts that I want. <laughs> Kelly's journey to a D1 scholarship included time with the Guelph Gators and Waterloo Ghosts. She played four seasons with the Gators in her hometown, and last year she hit the diamond with the Ghosts. I know that the Guelph and both the Waterloo associations, they've done, um, they've been able to produce so many really great athletes and send them off to university and those teams have really, just the coaching styles, they've been such a big help and able to get me that really great experience, give me the mound time and um, I know like they've been so supportive and really encouraging and helped me to reach my goal. I think it's those organizations that allow them to show their talents, right? They're the ones that put them in the right places at the right times to showcase what they have. And I think it's also a testament to the time and effort that these organizations, organizations spend on their programs um, to make sure that that happens for these athletes and gives them the opportunity. Andrew Karkoulis is the owner of the PPA Hit House in Guelph. Karkoulis and his wife Courtney, a former D1 player herself, have been working with Kelly for almost a decade. They are proud to see her development and her milestone moment signing in South Carolina. Just a great person, hard worker, great student, good athlete, just the type of person you want to build your team around, the type of people you want to have on your team. If you could, you'd probably have 15 of her to make a good team. Andrew and Courtney are just such, they're such loving and kind people. They really get to know you on a personal level, um, which is really important for you to actually make that connection, be able to learn and grow and um, just get better. Another factor in Kelly's success, the assistance and guidance from Ryan Necheski and Next Level U Sports. Necheski is the head recruiter helping young athletes attain scholarships in Canada and the United States. McKenna is special because she just has all the tools um, and what those tools are are just hard work uh, on the field off the field in the classroom and as a student athlete she's going to strive because of that just because she takes everything very very seriously um, and she does it in a very positive way. With the rapid growth of Paris, Brant County launched their We're Here For You campaign to inform residents about what the county can help with. We spoke with Mayor David Bailey on what this campaign is all about. Well the goal for the We're Here For You release is the fact that so many people that live here and that are moving here don't know sort of some of the things that we take for granted. They don't know how we get our tax rate, how, how, they, how we get our formula for taxes. They don't know who, service them, who services them for, for, for fire and who services them for police and why we have the OPP and not our own police force. Um, even, even something as easily as, as what services are available or um, what sports teams are around. Just stuff, just stuff that we take for granted because we live here. All the phone numbers, all the phone lines come through Central Brant County. So when you call someone, you're going to get someone either at the front desk here, and it's all done with extensions. So they'll just put you over to Public Works in Burford, and they can tell you about things like that. Uh, the same as the traffic or, or, or the police. You can, you can just be connected through the central number of the county, which is on everyone's business card. So whether it's the mayor or a counselor or even any member of staff, all of our, our telephone extensions are all done through this main office. Well, you know what? I just want people to know that the everything has a time stamp on it. So we, we can't deal with things that happen prior to us. And I, I want people to know that because I don't want to own anything that I inherited. I want people to see the differences that my council now is are, um, are making. And, and I want people to know that this council is very, very aware of the trouble we're in in the county. But also, we're also very aware of how wonderful it is to be here. Your region this week continues after these messages.
Welcome back. Sean Fafaro has the highlights of the Guelph Storm and the Kitchener Rangers over the past week. Kitchener Rangers hosting the Guelph Storm in the annual Remembrance Day game. Lucas File starting in net instead of the injured Jacob Ingham. Jonathan Yancis gets the Rangers on the board first, 1 0 late in the first period. But Cam Hillis answers back late in the first as well, less than a minute later. On to the second period we go. Danil Cheka for the Storm puts them up 2 to 1. And then Cedric Ralph on the power play, 3 1 Storm, middle of the second period. Shortly thereafter, Danil Cheka's second of the game. And the Storm go up 4-1. to one. Jonathan Yancis would also pick up his second of the game, making it 4-2 to two at the end of the second period. The Reed Vlad would make a game of it here. You see Axel Bergfist set up the play. Vlad finishes it 4-3. But two empty netters for the Guelph Storm make this a 6-3 final. One of them coming from Cam Hillis. Cam Hillis with two goals and two assists. Four points on the day. Jonathan Yancis with two goals. The Rangers would continue on to Oshawa on Sunday and Oshawa would strike first Sarah Noel at 826 on the power play makes it one nothing Liam Howell answers back to make it 1-1 but Sarah Noel gets his second of the game in the second period Oshawa up 2-1 at that time Oshawa goes up 3-1 by who else Sarah Noel with his hat trick three consecutive goals his eighth of the year Riley Damiani cuts it within one with five minutes left to go, three to two, but an empty netter would make it a four to two final for the general. Sarah Noel with four points and the hat trick. Riley Damiani with one goal and one assist. The Guelph Storm, you've already seen their highlights in Kitchener. They had a rare Saturday night game hosting the Kingston Frontenacs. It was Kingston who would get on the board first, 6-12 of the first period. It's Jordan Frasca. And they put a second one in in the second period. Zade Wisdom. Kingston looking for their second win of the season. Up 2-0 on the Storm. But Keegan Stevenson makes it 2-1. And the red hot Pavel Gogolev in the third ties the game up 2-2. Cedric Ralph had a great game on Friday night in Kitchener. He makes it 3-2 for the Storm. The comeback, will it be completed? Yes, it will. Josh Wayneman gets the insurance goal, makes it Four to two for the Storm. Cam Hillis with three points in the game and seven points on the weekend. New Frontenac, Nick King picking up two assists, but the Frontenacs cannot pick up their second win of the season. Upcoming games for Kitchener. They host the Frontenacs on Friday the 15th. Sunday, they are at London. And then Tuesday, it's another battle of Guelph versus Kitchener. Upcoming games for Guelph. Friday, they host the Owen Sound Attack. Saturday, it's the Saginaw Spirit. And yes, on Tuesday, they head back to Kitchener on the 19th to face the Rangers. That's it for another episode of Your Region This Week. For more information on the show, or if you have a story idea, visit our website, rogerstv.com, and fill out the proposal form at the bottom. Next week, Your Region This Week will be showing the best of the region stories. A new episode of Your Region This Week will air Friday, November 29th at 7 p.m. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.